Welcome back to another chocolate review. This one is Vive Etna Cacao 50% uh, cocoa with milk. And it's from Bolivia. It's everything's in Spanish, so you can try to read this for yourself. But what we took away is that <laughs> it's a milk chocolate. And I think it's trying to tell us the tasting notes, which might be something very powerful. <laughs> I hope this is like a chocolate we could get at the supermarket if we went to Bolivia. I hope so. Because I'm going to judge Bolivia based on this <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> no, we're not judging you, Bolivia. But I, 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 am, I am a little excited about this chocolate because everything is in Spanish <laughs> and our, our basic Spanish reading skills and comprehension skills are failing us right now. It's, it's a little bit of a mystery. So I'm looking forward to what this mystery chocolate tastes like. Um, and yeah, let's get it tasted. Opening up this chocolate is very interesting. There is a packaging uh, label that you can rip on the back into a triangle shape. Oh, that sounds Ooh. satisfying. That sounds very satisfying. Inside, you can see the chocolate square wrapped in a very pretty yellow packaging. It looks well thought out. It looks well folded inside. And opening it is fairly straightforward. It opens very easily. That's nice to see. Pulling out the chocolate. Oh, I was not expecting that. This might be maybe the most creative way to slice up a chocolate bar I have seen in a while. You know, some of um, Dick Taylor's chocolates uh, are, are interestingly carved up. This is definitely an interesting carving. It is both a, a square with some subsquares and some elevated portions. There are multiple elevation levels in this chocolate. It feels a little bit like Tetris, but very sort of Mesoamerican feeling to it. Maybe more, maybe uh, Aztec uh, or Tolmec in its nature. The snap, <laughs> uh, not a very hard snap, but the chocolate will crumble as you try to break it up into pieces. You need to use a little bit more force because of how thick the chocolate bar is. And as you break it up, it might leave some residue on your fingers. So beware of that. Don't touch any white, white clothing after you open up this chocolate. I think this chocolate is trying to represent Bolivia. You think that so? That architecture basically built into the chocolate mm. as if it was kind of one of those ancient pyramids. Yeah, and it was really tough to break it because of the double layer on top of the chocolate. Mm. I'm getting the sense of like a Taza chocolate, the, the granularity of the cho chocolate. Oh my god, was I was about to, to say exactly the fingers. same. I was gonna say, but not in the texture of it breaking out, but in the smell. The smell mm -hmm. of the sugar feels very familiar to what Taza chocolate smells like. Yeah. I don't think the texture will be similar, just based on the look of the chocolate. This one seems more smoother, but the, the, they seem to use a very similar sugar. For their chocolate. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, Three two, two, one. It melts okay. Not like super melty, but the chocolate definitely comes through stronger and heavier and kind of like a really rich milk chocolate, a uh, hot chocolate, like mm. kind of drinking hot chocolate is kind of the taste that I get. So maybe a similar use of milk powder and sugar that's used in hot chocolate it's being used in this chocolate mm. I, I agree with you on the melting profile it's a chocolate you have to work it doesn't disappear very quickly all on its own you, you have to work it a little bit you do have to bite through it because it is a, a chunky piece of chocolate as you're putting it in your mouth mm. and the thing that surprised me is that there, there is a little bit of a I don't, want, I don't want to say a floral component to it, but that there's something sweeter inside of it that isn't just the pure cocoa bean or just the sugar. That there, There's like an undertone of a, of a, you know, the, the sweetness that you get with honey a little bit, you know, there's the sweet part of the honey and then there's the part where you can kind of feel the flower. I get a little bit of that feeling with this chocolate. There's something extra underneath all the layers and it and it, it could be vanilla, it could be something else, but it's it's quite interesting. 
might have seen from our faces that it's like, we're like, eh, what do we, what do we think about it, it's, right? It's an okay <laughs> chocolate. Yeah, it's, it's an okay chocolate. It feels like a good, you know, made for tourists maybe. Yeah. Kind of like an industrial chocolate. Uh, I'm happy with it. I, I'd give it like a solid five. If, if you're if you're you know somewhere if you're in Bolivia and you're looking for a chocolate and you want to take a cool a cool photo with a chocolate that sort of looks local this would be a nice chocolate to take in that photo and I think for that reason you know I would I would say a good five um, will it become a part of my in our standard repertoire probably not yeah I think it's it's Maybe. a little small. It's like the Hershey's of Bolivia. Oh, let's you know? not, let's not where, say that. Where, oh yeah, that's true. Oh, um, we get too controversial. No. But maybe people in Bolivia, like, this is their flavor. Mm. And so it's like adapted to Bolivian flavor profile. Could be. Of could chocolate. Be. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for tuning in to this video. And if you get the Viva Etnia chocolate, let us know what you think about it in the comments down below. <laughs> Bye.